I'm just getting set up. We've got a kind of weird setup. Um, yeah, so anybody who wants to follow along with the demo, uh, I would encourage you to start getting set up now. Um, there's um, on the con page for this session, there's a link to the slides if you want to see the slides on your own computer. Um, but if you go to simplytest.me, at the bottom of that website, there's a small word which says register. And um, they don't send you any marketing or anything. But when you register, you get your site for three hours uh, instead of 30 minutes. I have no idea what time it is. Let's see. Okay, and I, th I think we're done at 11.45, right? Um, no, let's keep it here for a while. Si tú deseas uh, hacer este conmigo, tú puedes uh, crear un cuenta en simplytest.me. Busca para la palabra registrar en el bajo de la página. Si no puedes hacer este uh, en este momento en tu máquina, uh, tú puedes hacer en otro día. Uh, los eh, caminas, <laughs> los pasos, uh, están en este URL. Um, so if you want to do this, if you can't do it today, uh, locally on your machine, you can keep these steps in the handout and you can follow them exactly later. Um, but the link to the handout is bit.ly slash d8mi minus lab minus handout. Okay, good. Yeah, let's go. Oh, wait. Here. Okay, um, so... I'm Kathy Thays, and we also have some people here to help us. Uh, Alina is going to help me. She's going to do the demo, uh, and I'm going to talk about it. And Jared can also um, walk around and look over your shoulder and give you help, too. Uh, so if you're trying to do it, um, he can help you with that. So if you have trouble with the URLs or anything, uh, you can ask him. Oh, yeah, Jared también. Habla español. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, welcome. Uh, this is the Drupal 8 Multilingual Hands-On Lab. It was uh, originally created by Gabor and Amy. And it's provided um, as an open source presentation that any person can give. Um, and uh, so if you want to give the same presentation to your local group or a camp, or you want to give it at the next con, just go ahead. It's all open. You can reuse it. It's all good. OK, we're going to demonstrate the multilingual capabilities of Drupal 8. And I think that you will see um, that you'll agree with Tobias, uh, with T. Steckler, when he says that um, Drupal 8 in core has more multilingual capabilities than Drupal 7 with all of Contrib. It's really amazing. 
My name is Kathy Thays. I'm a Drupal 8 uh, core contributor. Uh, I mentor a lot, and I help organize sprints. Um, I'm YesCT on Drupal.org and also on Twitter. I work for Black Mesh, and my job is to help people work on core and get Drupal 8 released. Uh, it's a great job. Ah, multilingual. So Drupal 8 has something like 2,300 people who have uh, commit mentions. <clears throat> so that only counts patches. So Drupal 8 has a lot more contributors than that. Um, multilingual has 1,100 contributors. This counts everybody. This counts if you make a patch or a review or anything. Um, and if you want to help out with Drupal 8, um, I would encourage you to, if you have an interest in multilingual, uh, our team that's working is very supportive. And we're really welcoming of new contributors. Um, and we respect a lot the variety of skills that people have. Um, so join us. <clears throat> OK, so there's a lot to cover in the lab. Um, if you have a local install, that will work better. Uh, if not, you simply test me. And Jared is here to help us, too. We're going to cover installation, the language module, interface translation, content translation, config translation. Um, and then um, later in the day at 2.15, um, at the table that's near the mentor table in the general area, we can uh, meet again and continue if anybody has questions or wants help with their thing they tried to do on their, on their own computer. So we have short time in the presentation. But later, at 2.15, by the mentor table, uh, we can meet again and continue. So we're going to look at language, interface, content, and config. And this is the step-by-step -step handout, bit.ly slash d8mi minus lab minus handout. OK, so what we have also is um, a demo of a site, a multilingual site built with Drupal 8 core. And this demo project is on Drupal.org. And if you've never used simplytest.me before, it's amazing. You can give a URL like this one to people that you work with um, or clients or anything like that. If it's on Drupal.org, simplytest.me will build a site based upon the URL. So this builds a Drupal 8 site from the distribution multilingual demo uh, in the cloud. So you can try this right now if you want. Uh, simplytest.me slash project slash multilingual underscore demo slash 8.x dash 1.x. And that will start a site. It's very fast. Simplytest.me is very fast. And it will start the uh, end result of the demo for you that you can play with. So this is really great. OK, so now we're going to um, That one is my computer. Right, OK. <laughs> and that's the script. OK. OK, so uh, when you have a nice URL for Simply Test Me, it fills out the form with all the versions and things. And then you launch the sandbox. If you haven't registered on Simply Test Me, please go to the bottom of the page and register. You sign up for an account, and then you get your site for tres horas. Si no registrar, solamente tiene para uh, 30 minutos. 
So registering is very good. And it's free. And they don't send you spam. Okay, yeah. And so we can just save and continue. No, not for the demo. Yeah, for the demo, I would stick with the English install. And then you leave the, all the defaults, and you just keep saving. Okay, so please do that also. We're going to let this run a little bit. And um, this will give you the end result of the demo. Uh, but let's start building it ourselves, okay? All right, we're going um, we're gonna to build with a beta version of Drupal 8. We want beta 6. So if you're looking at the handout with the steps, um, and you can find a link to the handout um, from the session page on the DrupalCon website. So if you find this session page on the DrupalCon website, there will be a link to the handout. So you can follow along. Um, and on there is some links and some instructions for how to install Drupal 8 uh, Beta 6. Um, okay, and for our demo, I thought since we were here, we will install in Spanish. So, hold on a second. So if you want to do this also, you can make a new tab, a new window, and go to Simply Test Me, and pick, um, pick Drupal Core. So here, if you just type slowly, and the Wi-Fi works, it will auto-complete Drupal Core and pick the answer that comes up that is Drupal Core. And then after you pick Drupal Core, there'll be a drop-down on the side. Uh, and you want to pick um, Beta 6. So just like that, Beta 6, and then launch the sandbox. So this will get you the same Drupal 8 Beta 6 that I have locally. You can have this, but it's, in the, it's up on the server somewhere. And your site will only last three hours. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm installing Drupal 8 Beta 6 in my local host. Do I need any additional module, or it is all included in the core? It's all in core, which is what makes this so excellent. All right, so I started this earlier. So, um, okay, so yeah, so once you start installing, pick, pick a Spanish, and then save and continue, and then just keep saying all the defaults. And... Um, when you're done with that, uh, the site will look like this. So in Drupal 8, uh, it's multilingual, the install right from the beginning. The very first thing that you do is you pick your language. And the translation file is downloaded and available during the install. So you can answer the install questions and the forms in any language you want. Um, and then once your site comes up, uh, the, the um, UI strings are already translated for you. So this is really great. Okay, when you install in another language, it turns on the language module for you. 
Um, but we can check and see um, how that, uh, where that setting is. So if you go to Manage Configuration, Regional and Language Languages, it's, um, yeah, Region y Idumea. Thank you. Idioma. I can do it. I knew I could do it. Idioma. Uh, y luego idiomas. Ok, está bien. Y mira, solamente está español. Ok, no está inglés. Right? So this is really good. <laughs> uh, and you can add more languages here. Ok, so um, let's add uh, Hungarian and English and French. It looks like Hungarian. <laughs> yeah. So, Hungario. Yeah. So, um, si funcionan, si funcionar correcto, uh, it downloads the translation file automatically. So you don't have to download it and put it in your code base and upload it to your server. You just say add and it's just there. It's Drupal 8 so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But when we release, it will totally work like this. And the, in, in the beta 6 it does. So you can see here, see a Hungarian, it says 72% um, of the strings are translated. Here, I'll just run back. Oh, thank you. Um, okay. Sí, es que, hello. Huh? Más cerca. Sí, es que quiero saber si eh, añadir, añadirle otros idiomas, otras traducciones, debe de ser después de crear todo el, el, el site o solamente traduce el core um, uh, los uh, can I answer in English <laughs> uh, the files for the UI strings um, are core pero uh, modules puede um, provide PO files for their user strings también Ah, so if you have user if you have um, user interface strings in a custom module, in your custom module, you can make a PO file for your user strings. Yeah, and you can add languages um, whenever you want. You don't have to do it at the beginning. You can build it and add more languages later. But we're doing it at the beginning here. Oh, good. Oh, see. Does it does it does it translate my pages? Ah, oh, okay, okay. Right. So this what we're doing right now is only going to give us the admin UI strings. In order to translate your content, um, you do it a little different, and you have to do that yourself. Uh, and we'll. Hopefully, we will hopefully, I'll show you how. Oh, yeah, so Drupal 8 is not done yet. So we have several open issues. For example, we have an issue. These um, el, uh, nombres de idiomas uh, están en inglés. <laughs> Pero uh, todo uh, página es español, so... This will, we will fix this. It's okay. If you want to help me fix it, you can come on Thursday. I know exactly this issue. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, so we can see what this looks like. So let's go to um, slash hu. So just take the admin config off the end of your URL. 
and make slash H-U. Good. And so now you can see the admin interface strings are in Hungarian. Okay? All right. Oh, if you're following along in the PDF or the, or the Google Doc, you will see some sections. The title begins with the word skip. That means we're not going to try and do that right now, but we can try and do it later. Uh, they're also in a different color to help you find your way to the next part that we're going to do. So the next part we're going to do is um, in Pagina Cinco. And it says, observe content language page. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to go to manage configuration regional and language content language. Okay, so this is the content uh, language page. And uh, just try clicking on these things. So click a couple of them, uh, maybe the block, block one at the top, and maybe content, contenido. So, and then uh, if you look below, now we have some tables here. And what we can do is set a default language for content that's created of that type. And we can enable a, con uh, a language selector. So uh, we just want to look at that here. Um, but this is the page where you can set those settings. So one of the cool things we can do in Drupal 8, if you go to the top of this page, if you scroll up, uh, there's a star here. Una estrella. Sí. In, and go ahead and do that. And what that does is it adds uh, a shortcut. Um, I didn't know this word before last night. Uh, Atajo? Hmm? Atajo. Atajo. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's where we have the language settings and we can make shortcuts. Um, let's go down now and um, let's make some content. So we're going to create a custom block. Um, we don't have to save any settings there, that's fine. So we're going to go to manage structure block layout, which is uh, administración, estructura, y. Diseño de bloque. Okay. Y luego, uh, let's add a shortcut here too. So we click the star, because we're going to come back here uh, later. Okay, now um, let's make a block. So let's do add custom block. Andir bloque personalidad. Dado. Okay, and here, let's just put um, some words. So we can put explorar el mundo. Es el ejemplo, es el, um, the example for the demo. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And in the body, you can put palabras. <laughs> y luego, uh, guardar. Right, so then we save it. Now, it will come back. You can see the title is still there. Uh, and then if you go down, um, let's pick for the region, uh, primera, barra, lateral, the first sidebar. Bien. And then, garar otra vez. Okay. Y, um, it's hard to see because we're zoomed in here for the recording, right? But maybe on your screen you have more... Real estate. Um, but if we look for uh, primera, para, lateral, you can see here is your block, and you can move it. Um, maybe we move it to the top, and then uh, go to the bottom and guardar otra vez. Okay, so now let's use um, the nice back to the site button that we have, regresar al sitio, and, and here is our block. Okay. Um, it also has quick edit links, which are really nice, but we're not going to mess with that right now. So now we have a block. Okay. So now we're going to skip some more things. Okay. We want to return to the content language page, but we made a shortcut for that. So now we can go to our shortcuts. 
En con el idioma del conte contenido. Bien. Okay, so now let's show the language selectors on the create and edit pages. Uh, let's do that for a bunch of different types of content. Let's do it for blocks, content, custom menu link, and taxonomy terms. Okay, and then for um, each of these, let's uh, pick the setting for show language selector on content and edit pages. Muestra el selector. Sí, y cada. Okay, so now let's go back to the home page again. Go back to the site. Uh, and if we edit this block, and let's do, um, I forget which one. Let's try that one, the edit. And then if you scroll down, you can see here, now we have a language selector. So we can say, what is this? Maybe we wrote it in French, and there was no language selector before, so we couldn't tell it it was in French, right? But now, once we give it the language selector, now we can write it in whatever language we want, tell it what language it is, and we can translate it later. We don't always have to write in the same language first. Uh, okay, so we can leave that. That was in Spanish. That's good. Um, Okay, now when we, earlier, when we switched to Hungarian, we went to the URL and we put HU. But that's not convenient, right? So let's enable the language switcher block. Um, so we can go to our shortcut for diseño, el bloque. Great, so now we're at admin structure block. And we want to find the block on the, well, I'm, it might be a la derecho. Here, maybe collapse this. No, that's not what we want. Where's, I think it's off to the side, maybe, but we can't see it a little thing there. Or it might be down. Maybe it's, yeah, it'll go down more. No, the, um, no, it's, it's oh, in the, oh, it's in the, here they are. Okay, so it, my screen is narrow, so they're at the bottom of my screen, but they might be on uh, al lado derecho uh, par, for you. We want to find the one that says um, alternador de idioma. There we go, under system, yeah. That's the language switcher block. And then we can pick its region, I think. Yeah, so there's the region. And let's put it in the same place. El mismo lugar, primero barra lateral. Okay, uh, and I think maybe we might want to save again. Guardar otra vez. Yeah, maybe move it to up to top again. Good, and then we'll save it. I think the save is in the middle because that's the sidebar. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then let's go back to the site again. You can either pick uh, uh, home or we can go back to the site. Great. Okay, super. So now we can see here our language switcher block and we can click on them and um, we'll notice the URL changes. So we installed in Spanish. So Spanish is the default language. There's no ES for Spanish. There's only um, uh, two letter language codes in the URL for the languages that we added. Um, there's an issue to make your default language. You can also specify one if you want to do that, but that's not working yet. Um, but this is really nice because your default language is your default language. Okay, so now let's do something else. Let's translate something so that when we click on the language switcher block, we can see our content change. That will help you with, with your question. Um, so what we need to do is enable the content language module. Now we don't need to download it. It comes with core. Uh, so we just want to go to manage, extend, extender. Okay, now, mira, este es muy bueno. 
these are search here, the buscar, and so uh, you just need to like escribe uh, translation or start or something. It's in, there you go. So now we have content translation. It's really easy to find the module you want, and let's save that. Okay, fantastic. So now, um, I don't know, because this is mobile, if you, if you search for the same module again, oh yeah, my screen is too narrow. Mobile hides some of the extra columns here, but if you have a wide screen and you search for content translation, um, over here on the left, will be a link to go right to the configuration page. So you don't have to know where the configuration page is. You go, you like, I enabled this module, I want to configure it, and the link is right there. Um, but I know where it is. It's just in the languages section. So we're going to go there again. We're going to go to administration, um, configuration. And if you click on the um, arrows on the side, you get the administration menu without reloading the page, which makes it faster, uh, which is nice. And then, yeah, region and languages. And then we want to go to content translation. Yeah. Okay, now the thing that is different here, if you scroll down a little bit, it still has saved that we want to show the language selector. And if we had picked a default language, it, it knows that too. But now we have a new column, which is, is it translatable? And so we can check off and say, yes, we want to translate the content. So let's pick um, translatable for uh, blocks. Um, yeah, let's do blocks and uh, taxonomy terms. And then let's save this. Okay, and then scroll down a little bit after you save, and what you'll see is that it keeps um, the settings that you have changed open. So you know what is different from the default, which is very nice. Uh, let's uh, make something else translatable. Let's translate the um, article and basic page. Okay, now let's scroll up a little bit and look at article here. So what happened when we said we wanted to translate article? is we are shown all of the translatable fields. And we can say yes, translate, or no, translate, all on the same administrative page. You do not have to go to manage field, and each one click yes, translatable, or no. You can do it all on one page. So this is really nice. Also, if you scroll down a little bit to where the file is, the image, here you can see there are some nice defaults. Um, so here under image, the file, archivo, is not translatable by default. I think most of the time the image of your shoes are the same in Spanish and in English, right? But the alt tag and the title need to be translatable. Okay, so then we can go down to the bottom and save this again. Okay, so now let's translate some content. First, we're going to make a piece of content. Let's make uh, a basic page for about us. It's, yeah, it's, also, it's in the shortcuts. There, some shortcuts come by default, so there's uh, add content is in the shortcuts. And then let's pick uh, Pagina Basica. Okay, let's make a title in uh, Spanish for about us, but I don't know how to say it. Sobre, acerca de, okay. Está bien, okay. Okay, now we have a language selector here because on the language administration page, we told it to show us the language selector. So I could write this in English first. Even though my default language on the site is in Spanish. So let's do that. Let's make this English, right? So let's say about us here instead of acerca de. Yeah, so let's say, hey, you know what? I'm going to write this in English first. I can pick any language I want, right? So 
about us. And then let's put words for the body. Great. And uh, let's also make a menu. So, uh, a la derecha, opciones del menu. Yep, tell it we want one. Uh, the title is fine and the weight is fine also, so we can just save that. Okay, so now what we see in our navigation menu is we see our title. Here, don't translate yet. <laughs> Go scroll up. So here we see about us in English, right, the menu. We look at the title of the content is in English, about us, and the body, which is a field on the content type, right, is also in English. Um, yeah, so now we can, let's, let's translate it. So we click the tab that says translate or traducir. And we can add a translation. So let's do Spanish. Okay. And acerca de... Y también palabras. Okay, now, <laughs> it, we can change the title of the menu, but it won't do anything. But let's do it anyway, okay? Make about us acerca de. Pero no te preocupes. Okay, and then let's save this. Yep. Okay. Oh, it worked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, that's what that's what's broken about it. Okay, I knew that. I did th I did this last night. Okay. I knew this was broken. I just forgot how. Okay. So, right. So, yeah, so if we use our language switcher and we switch to Spanish, we see the content is okay. The content title is good and the words are good. But if we switch to English, we get the content is also okay. The title of the content is fine, the words are fine, but the menu is universal. So we don't want that. Why don't we edit, why don't we edit this and put it back to about us for the menu, and then we'll save that, and I will show you how we translate the menu. We can translate it, just not right here. Okay, great. So this is just the content. So if you think back to the beginning of the talk, there were four parts of multilingual. Languages, content translation, user interface translation, and config translation. Nodes, uh, like articles and pages, are content. And we only turned on content translation module. Uh, we also have the user interface because we installed in Spanish. Um, but we have not turned on config translation. And the title of the menu is config. So we'll get to that. But let's do something else. Let's uh, translate our block. So our block is um, al lado, so we can edit it. And let's do, yeah, let's do edit. Uh, and we have a tab here. So it's the same pattern. Even though this is not a node, we are not content type. This is block, but it's a custom block, so it's content. So let, we can translate this. Uh, let's add an English translation this time. Um, explore the world. And then we put words in there. And then we save it. Okay, now let's go back to our site and use the language switcher block and see if our block translates okay. So what are we in right now? We're in English. We can look at the URL. And, if we and our block um, also has a problem with the title of the block because that's configuration. But the content of the block is fine. So if we switch to Spanish, we can see the content of the block translates nicely, right? Okay. Okay, so now we're going to skip some things because we want to make these work. Um, okay, I'm going to go down to the section which is Enable Configuration Translation uh, because that's 
So I'm doing things in a little bit different order. If you're looking at the handout, I'm at the bottom of Pahina uh, Frese. <laughs> okay, so enable configuration translation. Um, we need to enable the module. So we need to go to extend, and this time we're going to look for configuration or translation. Either one of those is fine. And we want configuration, translation. Yep. Super. So now let's use our shortcuts and go back to our block layout. Uh, so that's manage structure block layout. It's admin structure block. And what we want to do is choose um, the block here. Uh, so we have to find it. It's in, yeah, explorer. Okay, so what we uh, do the drop down there. So we have a drop button here. Um, and I, we can pick translate right from there. Or you can pick configure, and then there's a translate tab. So you can see here's configure and the translate tab, right? Um, so now, now we can translate. So Spanish was the original language. Um, let's look at it and see what it, because I forget what we did. Okay, yeah, so the title is in Spanish. So now let's go back and add a translation for English. And now let's make it say, explore the world. And then we'll save that. Okay, now let's go back to our site and use the language switcher block and see how it looks. So we're looking at our block. This is what we edited. Uh, so we're in uh, the default site language right now. I, I can tell looking at the URL, which is Spanish, and the title and the uh, content are fine. Let's switch to English. And now, we, now the title is also in English. So this can be a little difficult at first because there's a difference between configuration and content. And I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, you'll get used to it. Um, yeah. Uh, OK, so let's do the same thing for our página. Uh, hace el mismo. Uh, so for about us, let's translate. Oh, so here you can see, because now we're switched to English, right? The UI is in English now. So anyway, so let's do translate tab. But you can switch back to Spanish if you want. Um, oh, I remember. What we, want, what we want to do is we want to translate the menu link for this, right? If I come here, I'm translating the content. Um, yeah, I, uh, where is that? Yeah, let's, yeah, I, I think it might be missing from my notes, but let's go to structure menus. And then, uh, buscando para, ah, main navigation. Now. Uh, espera. Um, yeah, let's look at the arrow. Okay, and I think what we want to do is actually, we don't want to translate the menu. We want to translate one link in the menu. So let's edit it first. Now we find our About Us menu link, and now we're going to translate menu link. It doesn't do any good to translate the menu. The, the user typically never sees the name of the menu, right? We want to translate the link. So if we pick, I think, the drop down uh, next to About Us. Oh, why does it say that? Hold on a second. <laughs> About us, finally about us, content menu, menu link, 
Did we not make menus? No. Hold on a second. Yeah, okay, let's let's try this again. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um Well, no, I think it I think this might actually be Hold on a second. Let's start again. Okay, let's we're just going to start again cuz I found them in my notes. It's actually labeled skip, but we're not skipping it. <laughs> um so it's called skip translate menu links, but we're going to actually do it. Um, so it's manage structure menus. So let's go back. Manage structure menus. Okay, now we're at admin structure menu. Uh, we want to find the main navigation menu. And what we're going to click is the context menu for edit menu. Yeah, so let's do edit menu. You might have been right, but I got lost. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, so um, now we want to find the About Us link, which we did. And in the context menu should be Translate. Okay, click on Edit. Yeah, I think maybe we didn't save it. Um, uh, well, the module is installed, so... No, so let's go back to... Uh, if I, we look at our shortcuts... Let's go back to the language configuration page in the Ulama. They'll ah, so let's go to let's find the menu section. There we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Now we can do it. Now we all know, right? So we go here and um, menus. I think it's in structure. Menus. Yeah. Good. And then now translate is a drop down next to about us. Okay. <laughs> and then let's. Uh, so this was originally created in English. So our menu link is always about us. What we want to do is add a Spanish translation. Uh, acerca de. And then we can save this. And let's go back to the home page. Okay, so now we want to see if the menu link, because be, remember before the content translated okay, because we had content translation on. The difference is now we turned on config translation. So let's switch to Spanish. And we're looking here at the menu and now the menu is in Spanish. Okay? So it's a little complicated, but it totally works. All right. So what we've talked about was how to add languages. Uh, we talked about content translation. Um, we've done some configuration translation in terms of the block title and the menu title. Let's do one more um, configuration translation. Let's translate the site name. So site name setting is manage configuration system system information. So it's administración, configuración, sistema, información del sitio. Okay, y mira, uh, at the top, we have a translate tab. Okay, so what have we got? Uh, Spanish was the original, so let's add a translation in English. Uh, so, here, look. Um, so, what happened, what's really nice here is we don't have to remember what it was in the other language. It's telling us that in Spanish it was explore. Okay, all right. Uh, so, let's translate that to English as explore. So, let's, let's save this. And then let's edit our Spanish original, and let's change this to Spanish. Uh, explorar. Okay. And then let's save this. So the configuration UI is very similar to the content UI. So we are trying to make things a little less confusing. So we have a, uh, um, tabs. 
And the configuration translation screen is really nice because it shows you the original that you're translating from and what you're translating into at the same time. Um, okay, so now let's go back to the site and see if our site name changes. So now we're in Spanish, the default language, and it says explorar. And if we cambia inglés, uh, the site name is explorar. Uh, maybe that's because it was the same and not different. Let's try it again. <laughs> yeah, system, site information. Let's try to translate English. Ah, because we were tra the, it was the same originally, it didn't actually save it as a translation. So, um, yeah. Okay, so now we're at site name is explore when we look at it in English, and it's explorar. In Espanol. Okay. So we're actually doing really good on time. So I, we're going to be able to do all the things I wanted to, which is great. So we have one more thing I want to show you, which is the user interface for the admin UI string translations. And one of the cool things that you can do with this is translate English. So you can change the default strings in the UI without any special modules. This is really great. Um, so this section is, um, so let's see, where am I? I'm on uh, Pagina 12 uh, in the center, and the heading is Interact, Enable Interface Translation. Uh, so this is in the handout where I am. And what we want, to, uh, we already have the interface translation module turned on because we installed in a language different than English. If you had installed in English, you would have to enable the module. But we installed in Spanish, so it did that for us already. So what we want to do now is go to um, the administration page for this. So that's in Manage, Configuration, Regional and Languages, but this time User Interface Translation. Traducción de la interfaz de usuario. Okay, está bien. Now, this, um, this UI is really nice also. We've done some improvements here. Uh, so we can search for content. So let's change, uh, si uh, let's change log in and log out to sign in and sign out. Oh, I remember what we need to do. But before we do that, we have to tell it that we want to translate English. Uh, so that we do, we have to override English. Uh, so I'm on the next page in the notes now, and overwriting English, make English translatable. So we do this on the uh, idiomas página. I think that might be in our uh, shortcuts, uh, but it's also right there too. Great. So the way we tell it that we want English to be translated is we first we edit English. Y aquí... We can tell it that we want to be able to, I'm not sure what that says, um, enable interface translation to English. Habilitar. Habilitar. Okay. So now we've told it we want to be able to translate English. Uh, let's go back to the user interface translation page. Yeah. Traducción del interfaz. De usuario. Y, okay, y aquí, uh, let's select English for our idioma. And for the content, what we want to search above that is let's search for a uh, log, L-O-G, and filter. And then we scroll down a little bit, and something here will say uh, login. Hold on, let me check my example. Oh, yeah, capitals matter. So let's uh, just capital L-O-G, but no in. Let's, let's just do the log with no in. And then filter otra vez. Aha, okay. So now we see the strings that match capital L-O-G. And instead of login, let's say sign in. And instead of log out, we can say sign out. Yeah. Un momento. 
now that you are working on this model, I think that option of capital letters and lower levels, that, that must be configurable. Maybe a checkbox that I can see to find all the options. Yeah. Es un buen idea. Uh, for the, um, para buscar. Solamente para buscar. Pero uh, los palabras exactos, then it matters, right? Yes, but when you're searching, maybe it would be helpful to be case insensitive or have an option for it to be case insensitive. And I don't think we have an issue for that. So if you, if you could create the issue and then, um, and then send a link, uh, that would be great. Okay, so go ahead and save these and then let's look at the site. And what we should, we'll see, because we have a logout menu uh, in English, so we switch to English, and then instead of log out, it says sign out. This makes it really easy to change those default strings. And also uh, because English is not the same everywhere, right? So this is very helpful for that. También. Okay, so um, let's switch back to the presentation. Okay, all right, great. Um, now, um, you, had, uh, you had a question earlier about translating content and whether or not Drupal would do that for you. There are some contributed modules which hook into uh, translation services and there's also contributed modules to make an internal workflow, which you can use for handling uh, revisions and uh, reviewing translations and things like that. Um, but it's too much to go into all that right now. Uh, but there is some support for that in Contrib. Um, we need some help with our tour modules. Uh, if you saw the keynote, uh, they mentioned that we have tour in core, and it gives uh, in-context help pointing at things on the pages. Uh, and we have issues open for, multi for improving our multilingual uh, documentation in tour and also otherwise um, in handbook pages and things like that. Um, we also need help people to just try Drupal 8 and help us find the bugs so we're sure we know about them. Because we need to know about them now. We need to evaluate if they are minor, normal, major, or critical. Because we need to make sure we know of all the criticals so we know where we can concentrate our efforts so we can get 8.0 released. And if we have a hidden critical because nobody's tried it, we find it later, it's going to slow the release down. It will actually help us release faster if we can find the criticals sooner. So, you know, start using it. Uh, don't worry about, you know, writing code and stuff. Just finding problems can really be helpful. Um, there is some uh, difficulties. Uh, what we relied on here was always the language fallback in the URL. But there are other choices for how you decide your fallback. So that gets a little bit more complicated, too. Okay, so... Um, Kristen uh, worked on this demo a lot. It's based in part on the, um, the Drupal demo framework. Um, and um, I really encourage you to try it yourself. If you started the uh, demo framework install on Simply Test Me, it's probably done by now. So you can go and play with your own built Drupal 8 multilingual site and try translating things and look at the settings and turn things on and off. Um, I, we have a great hub for our team that works on Drupal 8. It's drupal8multilingual.org. And you can find uh, updates when we write multilingual blog posts. Um, we have tweets there about multilingual. Um, we have upcoming places that we're making presentations. And we also have a really great format for um, helping you find issues to work on. Uh, so we, finding issues can be difficult. Uh, so we try and help you do that there also. Um, and uh, Gabor's website 
is uh, excellent, and he has multilingual tidbits, uh, which tell you all about like changes in Drupal 8 and all the great things that we've been working on, and a little bit about what's left to do. So uh, that's at h-o-j-t-s-y dot h-u, and you can go there and find all kinds of multilingual information. Okay, so um, we're only three minutes over. <laughs> that's great. Um, uh, we have a little break right now, so I, can, I will stay here and answer questions for you. But also uh, remember um, that at 2.15, uh, if you look for the mentor table with the tall green sign, uh, we can just meet at a table near there and uh, answer any questions you have or help get your demo working uh, or anything, anything like that. Oh, I remember. I have one more announcement, and that is that... Um, Multilingual has its team meetings in IRC. Uh, who knows how to get in IRC for Drupal channels, right? This is the place to be. I know IRC is very 1995 or whatever, but we use it, and that's where all the people are talking. It's especially important for our multilingual team meetings that we talk in a place where we write our words down. Because not everybody speaks English as their first language. And if you are on a hangout or a call, you, it's, it's so hard to understand if people are not speaking in your language. But when we type our meetings, people can copy and paste and translate something if they don't know what it says. They can think of what they want to say and use Google Translate translate into English. You can also just um, read something maybe a couple of times. You can read something somebody said and then read it again and you, know, you never have to say, could you say that again slower, right? Because it's all written down. So I really encourage you to get an IRC client. Um, if you have a Mac, Lime Chat is really great. Um, if you have a Windows machine or Linux, Hex Chat is good. Uh, Pigeon is also good for Windows. And the channels that are important are Pound Drupal, I'm sorry, <laughs> Hash Drupal, uh, Hash Drupal dash contribute. It's where we talk about making Drupal better. And you can go there. There's no special permission. You are welcome there. Uh, for multilingual, we go to hash Drupal dash D8MI. D Oche M -E, e. Drupal 8 Multilingual Initiative. And today, there is a multilingual team meeting. Uh, I don't know exactly what time because I'm off a little bit. Uh, it might be right now. I'm not sure. Um, but if you look for a tweet from Gabor, also, uh, he tweeted about when the meeting is. Um, so if you want to make your issue and join the IRC, you can put a link to the issue you created. And during the team meeting, we can talk about it and say, oh, yes, we have an issue for that. Let's mark it duplicate. Or, oh, no, you know, uh, let's, you know, thank you. Let's link it with this other one so people can find it. So we really like to talk to each other and support each other, and the meetings are really great. Um, so 2.15 for more questions. Uh, IRC, questions anytime. And thank you very much for coming to the demo. I'm really glad to see so many people here. <laughs>